everyone at The Crunchy Life, this is Kara, and I'm a little late this week. I'm having internet difficulties at home, so pardon me, but uh, we are talking about gentle discipline <laughs> this, this time around, and how do you cope with frustration, and what methods work for you, what doesn't work, yada yada. So I will just say, I'll start off by saying that obviously being more, being patient and doing the gentle route is not easy. It's not a cakewalk, at least not for me. I mean, we are, yeah, and this is a great time for me to talk about this too because I'm actually going through a frustrating time. We're actually dealing with some defiance that I haven't met yet. So, um, so it's great and it's testing me and I've disappointed myself obviously as we all do. Um, a couple times, but it's just, I, I learn from that, instead of just repeating it, I'm just going, I, I catch myself, and go, ugh, I don't want to do that, that sucks, especially if I make her cry, that nips it in the bud for me real quick, and I check myself, and I'm just like, damn it, <laughs> you know, so, but being a human, and dealing with frustration, is, is par for the course, and when they start becoming absolutely defiant, which I don't think insane defiancy w would really manifest as long as you're staying in tune and you're not barking orders at them and you're not being disconnected to them and just going no 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 stop stop ah stop it stop it get over here rah you know how it goes I mean you've seen it or spanking them god forbid or you know get over there and get in the corner or go in your room stand over here I mean it's just it's endless um but but I've been guilty. A couple things, like, I'll just tell you a couple of frustrations that I've, I've been dealing with this week and tell you how I've dealt with the frustration and how I've kind of, where I've failed and where I'm working on things and things that have succeeded. Okay. So this week, she, my daughter is obsessed with our bunny. We have a bunny rabbit who she loves and he likes her kind of. Um, <laughs> he puts up with her. Uh, well she's obsessed with him and he is in a cage put away like so I've taken the responsibility of keeping him put away so that I don't have to constantly yell at her and I think that's a big deal that's a big part of it um, let me just sidetrack for a second one of the things that I think is essential to keeping the situation under control with yourself and your temper and being gentle is that you have to set up your environment it's your job as a parent to set up your environment so that you don't have to sit there and say, no, no, don't, don't, stop, stop, because they're going to do what you don't want them to do if that stuff is available and in reach. So it's your job as a parent to, it's our job to create the environment that's safe for them to explore wherever they are. And other than being out on the street walking, you know, against traffic or whatever, certain situations like that, when it comes to just your daily day-to-day -day in the house or, you know... Um, you don't need to be yelling at them because you should have put up things and made the environment so that they can just have free reign. So with that being said, I have the bunny cage put up because she is crazy about the bunny. Um, he's in the laundry room. We bring him out, you know, when it's time to play with him, but meanwhile he's in the laundry room in behind a shut door. The only time I go into the laundry room, obviously, is to do laundry or feed the animals. And of course, every time she makes a beeline for that bunny cage and she'll start shaking the cage because it gets a reaction out of him and you know she just starts bothering him and like taking his water bottle and like putting it in her mouth Ugh. things like that I'm like ah, you know okay so so I have to be like no 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 um and I've caught myself a couple times when I was doing laundry and I was just trying to get things done and she goes in there and she keeps doing what I asked her not to do so I'm sitting here going, okay, she's too, she's not really going to get no. You know, it, it's not, it's something that will jolt her. If I want to go, no, it'll jolt her and it'll hurt her feelings, but it's not going to stop her from doing it again, obviously. It's not going to. Um, so I just, I keep, you know, I've, I've learned, and this is just an example, I learned to time it. I'll be like, okay, she's in the living room. I'm going to run in here and do what I have to do, and then she'll follow me. And when she follows me, I'll be like, okay, you want to get the bunny a carrot? 
okay. And during that time when she's getting a carrot, I finish what I'm doing and then I go, okay, give the bunny a carrot and then say bye-bye, you know, and so she'll open the door and she'll give it to him. I'm like, okay, say bye-bye. And she's like, okay, and she'll say bye-bye and we'll get out of the room. Now it works a lot, but there was a couple times this week where she was just kicking the cage and totally rattling him and I couldn't time it right. And she kept getting the bottle and putting the nasty bottle in her mouth and I was just like, no! And the other thing that she does that drives me nuts is she gets into the dog water. We have no other place where we can put our dog water. Um, I've tried. There's nowhere to put it out of her reach. So that's one environmental aspect that I don't necessarily have control over right now. So the only place for the dog water is in the kitchen in the corner. And she always has to get into it. And dog water is gross. You know, they slobber all in it and it's gross. Um, so she has to put everything in the dog bowl and I have to catch myself from being like stop it you know and I've done that a couple times out of frustration I've just been like I said no you know and I'll be like that and even that right there like makes her cry because it's abrasive and then I feel like a big huge jerk so I'm like oh, okay so what I do is every time we go into the kitchen, which is a hassle, but I put the dog water up when I know that she's going to be focusing on the dog water. And then I'll put it back down when we get out of the kitchen. It is a hassle, but the alternative is I get raging mad at her and I damage her and my relationship. And I don't want to do that. You know, that's not what I want to do. So. I just try to stick with diversion, give her something else, let's go over here, hey, you want to do this? Hey, how about this? And distract her from whatever it is she's obsessing about and then try to get it out of her sight or move to a different room or, because at two, I think at two and three, I don't know if, no, even at one, no way. I mean, before they're like four, I don't agree that um, they really fully understand no. I mean. And, and no should be, I think, something that's used extremely rare, you know, for like, 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 don't stick that knife in the light socket, but that's why they have light socket covers. Um, you know, don't run out on the road. No. Um, yeah. The frustrations, you know, it, uh, what I've learned to do and what I'm practicing doing now because I'm in no by means going to stand here and say that I'm at all perfect at this. And anybody who does, I want to slap because they're just like, oh, I don't ever yell. Well, come on. Okay. We're all doing our best. <laughs> so <clears throat> what I am trying to do is think hard about how it would make me feel if the person I loved with all of my heart and soul so immensely were to yell at me and I would be heartbroken and I was heartbroken <laughs> when I was a kid so um, so I try to remember that when I'm starting to get frustrated I try to slow down and not get caught up in the you know the momentum of the moment of the frustration and just go okay and I counting to ten is a huge savior because it, it it stops you no matter what she's doing unless it's life threatening um counting to 10 really met, lets you go okay honey let's come over here you know and that's if you're getting super super frustrated like um what else works for us in gentle discipline well, i read an article one time and uh really recently and it said something about how toddlers are so open their hearts are so open and when they get yelled at especially girls I mean boys too um, but boys are a little more abrasive sometimes and they're going headstrong rah, full force and sometimes you have to kind of jolt them you have to kind of go hey you know to get their attention um, but it doesn't have to be harsh but girls and this is just what I've noticed, and I could be completely wrong. I know a lot of boys are super sensitive, too. So, But girls also, in my experience, are very 
very sensitive. And, and if you raise your voice in the slightest way wrong, they cry and it devastates them. And so this article was talking about how because they're so open and, you know, when you get yelled at, the pain that they feel, the equivalent, the, the, the energy intensity for them is as similar to them as if, imagine your worst heartbreak. Imagine if the person you loved and trusted with all your heart, like, totally cheated on you and you were devastated. That pain, not the equivalent of the action, but the painful energy that you would feel in your heart, that's what your child feels when you yell at them and if you look and observe their energy and their face and their body and their heart chakra and their energy and their shoulders when they get upset when you've yelled at them they look as heartbroken as you know a person does when they're devastated you know so I try to remember that and I try to think do I want to cause her that pain right now because I'm frustrated you know no um, so those are the things that I reach for. I don't have a lot of tools or skills yet to handle things, but I just try to be empathetic and, you know, just think about how it would feel for them and, and not lose sight of the fact that just because I'm numb and I'm, I'm a little hardened more to harsher um, reactions, I need to remember that she's not and how much it hurts her. So that keeps me in check that keeps me saying things gently that keeps me you know guiding her away from situations that I want instead of just sitting on my ass and being like no I said no like you see a lot of mothers do that just pisses me off um, yeah so that's that's I don't know what else to say at 12 minutes that's just kind of what I do I just try to stay empathetic and I try to communicate and I try to always see things from her perspective which is hard, um, but, you know, it, that's what gets me through and gets me being gentle. Yeah, so I hope this helped at all. I didn't offer really many any skills because I don't really have a lot of skills in practice yet, but I, that, this is all I have to offer. So um, I hope it helped in some way, and I'll see you again for the next topic. Bye.